Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Singapore University of Technology and Design Open House 2022. So, uh, for those of you who are joining us here through your devices at home, you can always ask your questions through the chat box. Type it in, hit send, and we'll get to your questions once we can. For those of you here who are in the auditorium, of course, there are the mics at the aisle, so you have to hit up and ask your questions directly. We'll get to that. This is the admissions and scholarship session. Uh, we've talked about why you should come to SUTD over the past couple of days, but how do you even get to SUTD? And I don't just mean by Changi, by the Upper Changi Road. <laughs> okay, so let's not, we'll also be talking a little bit about scholarships because frankly, university is a huge investment for a lot of us and it's, it, should, it is prudent to be aware of how you can go about making the most of your university experience. Today, we have Director of Admissions, Ms. Lim Su Fang, and a few of our students, Serene, Yen Zhi, and Kelly, who will be talking to you about the admissions and scholarship process. Please. Thank you very much. Uh, a very warm good afternoon again to all the audience who are joining us live uh, from the auditorium as well as uh, the audience who are joining remotely from wherever you are. So as the MC have, uh, has introduced, uh, joining me today is uh, actually three of our uh, current students uh, to share with you later in a dialogue session on their admissions and scholarships application as well as their student life experience. But I thought I'll start off uh, the first part, uh, the first 15 or 20 minutes to give you a quick introduction of the programs, the undergraduate programs that you can apply for, as well as the admission requirements and the admissions process before we get into the dialogue session. Okay. Now, if you had joined our SUTD 101 session earlier this morning, uh, my president has given you 10 reasons to apply to SUTD. But really for me, uh, the top reasons, the most popular reasons why students apply to us and accept us, uh, and this is actually based on survey results of students who had uh, you know, uh, accepted SUTD's admission offers in the past uh, few years, have consistently been reasons which are very distinctive, very core to SUTD, really sets us apart from other universities. And I hope that these are similarly reasons that will resonate uh, with all of you as well. Now, specifically, um, these students uh, picked us because they recognised the value uh, of a curriculum that is not only design-centric, but also very multi- and interdisciplinary with lots of real-world applications. And in SUTD, we do it by incorporating human-centric design throughout our cur curriculum, cascading what students learn across years, across different disciplines, and through many hands-on real-world projects. And I think this approach really produces graduates who are quite different, uh, graduates who are not afraid to question why, not afraid to ask, uh, is there a better way to do things be you know, uh, in, 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 uh, in a more efficient way, better way to do doing something, uh, who are not afraid to question the status quo, who are very comfortable navigating uncertainties, working across different domains to solve complex problems uh, so that they can come up with novel solutions that can really transform uh, the way we live, that can really shape our future. Right? So, um, and another top reason why students picked us, uh, as you see from the slide as well, um, is also the freedom to be able to choose which program to major in at the end of the first year. And in fact, in SUTD, our first three terms are designed uh, so that you can get to take courses that introduce you uh, to the fundamentals of math and science, uh, grounds, you, grounds you in the fundamentals of math and science, and also introduces you to programming, to design, uh, to humanities and social sciences, as well as to let you uh, be exposed to a variety of different topics that introduces you uh, to our five degree programs. So after trying out for yourself and discovering uh, what is it that you're good at, where your interests lie, you will then be able to make an informed decision in term three, uh, which of the programs to major in. So at that point in time, you can choose either to, uh, you know, in our one of our Bachelor of Science program, be it to major in architecture and sustainable design, where you get to use a lot of digital technologies to uh, push the boundaries of your design and design a lot more sustainably. Or, for example, using AI to design better products, systems, services, and the built environment. And that's in our new design and AI program. Alternatively, you can choose from our Bachelor of Engineering program, uh, majoring in engineering product development, where you get to design and develop uh, products that are more autonomous, that can really simplify our lives. 
uh, or for example, applying um, you know, uh, data science and decision science to build predictive models in a pandemic situation, uh, design systems that are able to run more efficiently and sustainably in engineering systems and design. And certainly, uh, last but not least, um, you know, uh, combining design thinking and computer science uh, with applications across different engineering disciplines integrating hardware software design for smarter solutions that really power businesses uh, and our lives and this is in computer science and design uh, in the majors within the majors you can still choose to specialize by taking tracks and i think if uh, if you join our program sharings uh, you'll be able to find out a lot more uh, and you can even choose to also take up a minor offered by another pillar, another program, uh, even in Haas as well. So, for example, a minor that student can take could be in digital humanities that can complement your major. So, um, another important thing that you may want to note is that there's no cap on the intake for each program. Uh, so this also means that you are actually guaranteed your choice. There's no prerequisite required as well. So do remember that when you apply for admission, it is a common uh, admission to SUTD, and you can leave that decision on what major, what minor you want to take much later on after you, know, you have fully discovered your interests uh, and your strength as well. Okay. Now, some of you joining us today uh, may be high achievers. Uh, you might be. Uh, you may have the capacity to stretch yourself, and you are interested also deeply in the confluence of uh, technology and design with different areas, like in entrepreneurship, uh, research, medicine, and healthcare. Uh, if so, you may also want to apply for one of our special programs at the point of your admission application. Um, so, for example, the SUTD Technology Entrepreneurship Program, or STEP, uh, basically will allow you to gain a you know, deep mastery of uh, entrepreneurship uh, through multiple immersion, uh, immersion opportunities, both locally as well as in entrepreneurial hubs around the world. You will graduate concurrently with two degrees at the end of five years, bachelor and a master's of science in technology entrepreneurship. All right. Now, for some of you who might be interested in a more research-oriented pathway, uh, you might be thinking that you want to do a master's or a PhD after graduating, then the SUTD Honours and Research Program, or SHARP, uh, will be able to help you do that. Uh, even as an undergraduate, you get to you know, be exposed to very advanced topics. You get to do uh, research, about uh, different research projects uh, at the undergraduate level. You do an undergraduate uh, research thesis, uh, present papers at overseas conferences, and you earn a very generous stipend on top of any scholarship that you are awarded. So that's for sharp. And then for those of you out there who may be interested in medicine, uh, I think you'll be happy to know that there's also more than one pathway. Uh, we do have a collaboration with Duke NUS Medical School to nurture uh, future clinician innovators, clinician entrepreneurs who can transform healthcare delivery, healthcare outcome in a big way by combining their tech and design knowledge together with medicine. In fact, uh, two of our students here happen to be from the special track as well. Um, so, uh, for this particular um, and highly selective program, uh, uh, you can actually gain conditional admission to the Duke NUS Doctor of Medicine, which is a, M, uh, which is a graduate program, MD graduate program, uh, after you have actually uh, accepted SUTD's admission offer. Now, regardless of which of the three spo uh, special programs you have applied and are uh, admitted to, there's absolutely no restriction on the majors, the programs that you can major in. Okay, now, um, whether you're applying for SUTD's single degree, special programs, or scholarship, which I'll touch on later, uh, you only need to put in a single application online, so the same uh, online application, so you just need to take the relevant sections on the programs that you want to apply for. Um, and there's, uh, there's no application fee. We will review your application holistically. Now, the purpose of SUTD's holistic admission is really to select and admit students who are very much aligned with SUTD's vision and mission. And that is to educate technically grounded leaders who are steeped in the fundamentals of uh, math, science and technology, but at the same time also have very broad perspectives which are informed by humanities, arts and social sciences, who demonstrate that they can be creative and entrepreneurial and are engaged with the world. At the same time, we also want to prepare, uh, in the new normal, agile and resilient students uh, by equipping them with the lifelong competencies and also helping them to build social capital. So, uh, to do that, uh, we, you know, we really, you know, in terms of admissions, we look out for applicants who demonstrate to us that they are academically prepared with a good foundation in STEM, 
uh, we look for their broad interests through, uh, you know, what are the things outside of STEM that they are interested in, outside of curriculum participation, uh, so that they can cope with our multidisciplinary curriculum. Uh, we like to see students who uh, perhaps demonstrate some of the desired attitude that we like to see in our students, uh, maybe some attitude in coding, designing, or you know, very hands-on. Uh, but more important than that is also the right attitude, uh, the kind of students who will do well in SUTD's active learning environment, students who are collaborative, uh, questioning, risk-taking, and also have an appetite for learning. So usually these are students who demonstrate to us that they are self-starter. They are not waiting for the lecturers to tell them that you, know, you have to do, uh, do this and this and that, but really on their own, uh, pick up new skills, uh, who demonstrate to us that beyond what is prescribed in the curriculum, you know, they go over and beyond that, uh, take courses, self-learn to enrich their, their, their personal uh, skill sets and personal development. And of course, uh, SUTD's vision is to better the world by design. So we also hope that uh, students who join us demonstrate uh, good social and cultural awareness uh, and are engaged with the community, uh, perhaps have uh, certain causes that they personally are very passionate about, that they champion, uh, causes such as uh, sustainability for the environment, for example, uh, building inclusivity. Uh, those are just some examples of um, you know, students who can demonstrate that they, they, they feel very passionate about a particular area. And of course, we also hope to get a diversity of students with interest in various areas so that they can add to the vibrancy of the student community. Okay, so um, all this means is that you know, when we look at your application, we really view your application comprehensively. Uh, academic preparedness is important because after all, you are joining a university. You need to demonstrate to us uh, that you are able to cope with the rigor. Uh, however, when we look at uh, you know, whether you are uh, academically um, able to cope, uh, it's not just looking at your 3H2, 1H1 or your GPA, uh, you know, 10th or 90th percentile uh, grade profile uh, like a lot of universities do because that's uh, simply not how we assess our students. Uh, instead, um, we uh, look for students with a demonstrated competency, especially in math and science, because we found that students with a good foundation in these subjects tend to be better able to cope with the rigor of our curriculum. Now, as a point of reference, uh, we have also shared some of this on our uh, website as well. For the A-level students whom we have offered uh, admissions in the past, uh, nearly all of them, I would say 98-99% of the, the A-level students uh, have taken math and a science subject at H2 level. Uh, and I would say a good majority of them scored at least an A or B for those subjects. So this kind of gives you an idea. But the stats also suggest that there are some students who don't meet this profile, right? Uh, but still, they were able to demonstrate their competency to us uh, in other ways, their O-levels and their other uh, credentials that they present. Now, if you are a poly student applying to us, we do look at different things as well, the relevance of your diploma. We look at specific, how well you've performed in specific subjects within the diploma. Uh, we may also reference uh, your O-level subject competencies in math and science, um, as well as if you have taken advanced modules uh, you know, in poly, I think that will also be reviewed favourably as well. Okay. Uh, some of you may be applying to us with international qualifications. There are really many uh, international qualifications. I, I won't be able to discuss all of them uh, uh, with you all today. Uh, but uh, just maybe as a point of reference, for those who are applying with uh, predicted international uh, results, uh, we will require you to attend a university entrance examination if you are shortlisted. Okay. Uh, of course, for the specific details, I encourage you to visit our website or to visit us at the booth outside or our virtual consult session so that we can advise you on the details later. Okay. Um, of course, results uh, are important, but they are not the be-all and end-all, as uh, I quote my president uh, earlier this morning. Uh, beyond results, we also really want to select students who fit the kind of profile, as I have uh, shared earlier, uh, the kind of traits and qualities that we look for. And we look at all of this, or we try to find all of this evidence uh, in uh, various other information that you submit in your online application. So that includes uh, you know, your participation in co-curricular activities um, and also what you tell us about yourself in the personal insight questions. Okay? So in fact, uh, in this regard, I would really like to encourage um, students uh, because you have a choice of the questions that you want to answer 
try to pick um, those questions that will uh, fill any possible gaps uh, in your application. So for example, if you haven't done as well for a particular subject uh, in the final exam for various reasons, um, an illness or a special family circumstance, uh, use that personal question to give us the context in which your results are achieved. Uh, also use those questions to reflect what, your, what you are passionate about, your personal values, uh, your learning preference, uh, your, your, your interests, your aspirations, so we get to know you. And basically just share any other information that's not already evident in your application. Okay, uh, if you think it's helpful for your application, you can also include, uh, this is optional, a testimonial or the contact details of a referee or even any portfolio that you have accumulated over the years. All right. Uh, we will invite all shortlisted applicants to attend an interview with us. Uh, usually this is uh, around 20 to 30 minutes. And the whole idea is really for us to get to know you better. Uh, and at the same time, uh, it's also a very good chance for you to use that uh, interview uh, to ask us any questions that will really help you make that informed decision uh, once you have many different offers uh, in front of you to decide which program, which university to choose from. Okay, now uh, if you have applied or you are intending to apply for a special program, just take note that uh, the programs do look for additional traits that are specific to the programs that you are applying for. Uh, for the details, I think uh, you, know, you can uh, check out our special programs website or view the recording from the session yesterday. Uh, but because the uh, number of places that we have for the special programs are uh, limited, they are also highly selective. So in the event that you know, you're not successful in your application for for the special programs, we will automatically consider you for our single degree as well. Okay, so next part, let me move on to scholarships. I think earlier I mentioned that you can apply for scholarship as part of your admission uh, application. Um, so if you are successful, uh, we will communicate your scholarship award along with your admission offer as well. So it will be at the same time. Now, uh, uh, every year, we offer close to 200 uh, bond-free scholarships. Uh, and uh, in fact, that represents about 40% of the SUTD students who are admitted because we um, admit just about 500 students every year. So 40% of the students who enroll in SUTD actually do get a scholarship offer along with their admission offer. Now, many of our scholarships are actually available to uh, students of all nationalities and generally will also cover the tuition fees payable at the Singapore citizen rate. Okay? Uh, but just to highlight, uh, in fact, more than half of our scholarships are what we call the global scholarships, global excellence, global distinguished, global merit scholarships, which on top of covering your tuition fees, also offer a very attractive grant uh, of $9,000 that you can use to fund up to you know, two of the overseas programs that you may want to participate in. Uh, on top of that, the Global Excellence and Global Distinguished Scholarship also provides an annual allowance that you can use um, as well. In fact, this uh, allowance has just been increased from $5,000 to $7,000, so it's really very attractive. And finally, one of our top scholarships, the Global Excellence Scholarship, on top of all those benefits that I've mentioned uh, earlier, it also provides a grant, uh, an optional grant that you can use if you want to pursue a master's uh, later on, within three years after graduating, a master's with SUTD or selected master's courses at SMU. Now, this is really very attractive because especially for many of you out there who have not even decided you know, what is your major, let alone you know, decide whether you want to do a, a master's module or not. So this is something that you can decide later on as you decide uh, as you uh, plan your your you know articulation pathway. Um, all scholarships are merit based, but I just want to highlight that you know um, there are a number of donor and mid term scholarships that are also available. In fact, uh, just to share some of these uh, donor sponsored scholarships, we have um, companies like PayPal, uh, Singtel, uh, Shopee. Citrix, for example, um, that also do give uh, additional consideration to students with financial need and their uh, scholarship benefits may also uh, provide more attractive uh, allowances uh, as well as development opportunities for our students. On top of that, this year, we are actually introducing uh, 25 SUTD Special Awards uh, to cater to and to recognise students who demonstrate very outstanding um, attributes, achievements uh, that are very much aligned with SUTD's programmes. 
but uh, you know, may not have uh, the kind of great profile that will uh, you know, allow them to get a scholarship. So do check our website for information on uh, all these very attractive financial schemes. Okay, now in the event that you do not get a scholarship uh, from us, uh, you know, the cost of studying in SUTD for a Singapore citizen is uh, 13500 uh, a year uh, after the tuition grant from MOE. And for uh, permanent residents and international students, the fees will be about 1.5 to two times more respectively. Uh, other than this amount, uh, the other cost that you probably will need to provision for will be the hostel fees, which are required for students in the first two terms because the residential stay is in fact a very essential part of our cohort experience. Now, we do recognise that there is a, a you know, premium in the cost of studying uh, in SUTD for this very unique experience, educational experience that you are getting. Um, so the university has also uh, introduced various financial schemes to help students uh, you know, make our, ed uh, our education more accessible. And these are on top of various uh, financing options uh, that you may already have access to that includes you know, uh, loans uh, as well as uh, bursaries and study awards. I'm just going to highlight two schemes in particular. These are especially uh, applicable to Singapore citizens out there. Uh, the one of which is actually the SUTD Education Opportunity Grant. In fact, this scheme was actually introduced a few years ago uh, to complement the government bursaries and to provide a tiered quantum of support uh, for students of varying financial uh, neediness uh, so as to offset your tuition fees as well as the hostel fees for the first two terms. Um, so depending on your financial situation, we can cover uh, from 30% up to 100% for those students with the highest uh, financial need of your tuition fees as well as the uh, two terms hostel fees. There are no additional selection required as long as you meet the financial eligibility no bond and uh, certainly no limit to the number of recipients. So that's something that's important to note. Um, if you do not get a scholarship from us and also do not get a financial aid, we do also have a special uh, SUTD community grant. Uh, this is uh, $1,500 per term or a total of $12,000 uh, for the whole four years of studies that you can use again to offset your uh, tuition fees. Again, uh, this is automatically applied to Singapore citizens and there's no application needed. In fact, on top of all of this, for students who you know, go for overseas programs, our summer, ex uh, summer programs, exchange programs, uh, if you have needs, there are various uh, awards and exchange uh, scholarships available for students to tap on as well. So uh, you don't really have to worry about the financial uh, uh, schemes available. Okay, um, so maybe just to highlight some of the time, important timeline, as many of you already know, uh, application has already opened and uh, for those applying to us with international qualifications, it will close on 12th of March. Uh, for those applying with uh, local qualifications, everybody else, uh, it will close on 19 March. This is the same timeline as uh, the, uh, all the other local universities, um, so don't, do take note of that. Uh, once you have applied to us, if you are shortlisted, you should receive an email from us uh, asking you to select an interview slot. Uh, and this would likely be sometime between uh, end of March to April. Uh, and you should be able to hear from us on the outcome of your application uh, by early May at the very latest. You have until then, uh, 24th May, to decide whether to accept our offer. And again, this date uh, is a common uh, date with all the local universities as well. Uh, because if you're applying to us with local qualifications, uh, you, can, you have to accept the university's offer through the joint acceptance portal. There's one common acceptance portal. Okay? So after that, the, uh, you just have to wait for matriculation uh, and term starts in September. If you're applying for financial assistance, just a quick note that you can apply for that uh, in the year that you're joining us and after you have, accepted, uh, after you have received our admission offer. The, uh, uh, the indicative financial package will be shared with you uh, before matriculation. Okay, so I have already mentioned that our term uh, actually starts in September, but I think for those of you out there who are eager to uh, quickly get plugged in uh, to the student community, uh, you, we do have an early matriculation exercise uh, in June, uh, and you can already start to also take bridging courses that we offer for our students, a six weeks bridging class. Uh, for NS men, uh, you know, uh, not to worry uh, uh, as well. We encourage you to apply to us early. We will reserve a place for you to join us after you have completed your NS obligation. So that is two years later. 
Okay, so I think that's a lot of information that I have just presented. I'm sure um, many of you probably still have questions uh, about the admissions process, uh, and that's why I think I've invited our three students to join me in this panel uh, to share their experiences and also answer the questions that you have sent through uh, the, uh, the channel. So maybe I'll just invite them to quickly introduce themselves. Uh, you want to start with uh, Serene? Maybe you can start us off. Okay. Hi, so uh, I'm Serene. I'm an uh, ASD senior currently. Um, actually, uh, I was from CJC before coming into SCTD. And then uh, I decided to come into SCTD for architecture. And actually, my CCAs, or like fifth rows as we call it in SCTD, um, I was in cheerleading Vertex before, and then now I'm in dance DDZ. Yes. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, everybody. My name is uh, Yan Zhi. Uh, I'm an EPD senior. Uh, my previous school was uh, Victoria JC, BJC, and uh, my fifth roles includes a uh, university ambassador as well as a uh, chamber on some. Uh, I play the violin. Yep. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Kelly. Uh, I'm a CSD sophomore, which is term four, and previously I'm from Nian Poly, uh, studying a diploma in engineering science. My fifth roles include um, our very own student government route. I'm currently serving as the Vice President of Operations, Water Act Club, a Community Service Club, and also House Guardians. Mm. Thank you for the introduction. Now, um, many students in the audience today, actually they're very lucky. You have many options to apply to, and I'm sure many out there will probably find yourself applying to different universities. Now, I'm sure they'll be interested to also hear from you. You know, you were in their shoes just a few years ago. Uh, you know, what made you apply to SUTD uh, then? And, uh, you know, amongst the, if you had applied to other universities, why did you decide to choose uh, SUTD? Um, okay, for me, I actually, because I knew that I wanted um, architecture since like upper secondary. So um, for architecture in Singapore, it's between two schools. Uh, so I applied for both and uh, I actually got the offer from both. But during uh, my time when I matriculated, it was actually in May. So um, when I first matriculated, I had to accept SUTD's offer because um, I hadn't been offered by NUS yet. So uh, after I was doing, after I had gone through the orientation program in SUTD, uh, I realized that like, I liked the environment. You know, I already made like friends and everything. And then when I got the offer from NUS, I decided that I will continue to stay in SUTD since you know, the environment is quite nice. You know, I'm enjoying myself. I think I will do quite well here. So I continued in SUTD. Yeah. Thank you. What about Yenshi? Yes, so uh, I've gotten offers from uh, NUS, NTU, SMU, and SUTD. But uh, yeah, I decided to choose SUTD in the end because of uh, the multidisciplinary uh, curriculum where we get to um, learn things from many, many disciplines and uh, apply them to real-life situations. And I think also another thing to uh, highlight would be that um, in SUTD, we are able to learn how to communicate with uh, people from dif different disciplines. Lah. So in our capstone program, we actually have to work with uh, people from uh, all different pillars to work on a common project and I think that communication between uh, different pillars is very important to me. Uh, it's something that can be applied into the working world. La. So I think that's why I chose to uh, go with SUTD as compared to the other <laughs> universities. Yes. Kelly, you uh, are actually in the special track, so you're interested in medicine. Do you apply to other medical schools? Um, for me, because I come from a polytechnic background, I saw an interest in engineering and healthcare and merging these two fields. And I found that SUTD's um, special track program actually managed to combine these two fields really well. And for myself, I didn't really apply to other medical schools because I knew that I wanted to continue my education in an engineering field and followed by a medical field um, later on. Thanks for sharing your, your experiences. Now, uh, a common question that we are often asked, and I'm sure the audience are also interested to know, is uh, what do we look out for in admissions? And just, just now during my sharing, I did share the kind of profile of students. But from your perspective, you know, is there a typical profile of a SUTD students looking at yourself and your classmates? Uh, maybe, Yan Zhi, you want to share first? Yes, okay. So uh, I think for a typical SUTD student, I think it's important to uh, have very good communication skills because uh, there's many, many group works and many projects and you have to uh, communicate with your teammates uh, to uh, eventually reach the final goal, uh, the final uh, product or prototype. 
And yeah, so to me, that's very important. Uh, another thing that's very important is to be very spontaneous. Lah. So um, taking the initiative uh, to pursue things they are interested in. And uh, the professors here are all very nice. You can approach them if you are interested in their research work or their uh, projects. And I'm, most of them would be very willing to uh, allow you uh, to work on uh, parts of their project. Lah. So I think uh, being spontaneous is uh, very important as well. Yep. Mm. Kelly, what do you think from a poly background? Uh, is there a, a typical profile of SUTD student? Mm, I think there isn't really like a typical profile because everybody is different. But one thing I noticed is that most SUTD students tend to be very adaptable, willing to change, willing to learn. And I think this is something that's very important because we have many different projects along the way and you never know what you'll be thrown into. And you'll never know like, oh, maybe you're doing software today, but oh, tomorrow I'm doing hardware. So I think it's very important to be flexible, adaptable and open-minded. Mm. So uh, maybe, Serene, uh, you are in ASD. Do you think that ASD, uh, for students interested in ASD, do you necessarily to be, uh, need to be good in art, for example? Uh, <laughs> um, okay. I think naturally you should have some sort of like design sense, I guess. Uh, but as in, personally for myself, I'm not like a great artist in the first place. I can't really like draw a sketch like as amazingly as some of my other peers. But I think what's most important is actually just the, the fact that you want to design for something. You need to have like a goal, basically. And I think that you don't need to be like the artsy kind of person just to come into architecture. Uh, as long as you know what you want, you know um, like your interest in architecture, then I think that's more than enough, actually. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. Maybe just to add on to that, uh, because of the common uh, first three terms, uh, we really, uh, you know, uh, appreciate students with different profiles. You you can be very good in art, but even if you don't, uh, you know, that's maybe because you have not discovered your artistic talent uh, as well. And you can take the first three terms to do that. We have actually admitted, for example, um, students with an engineering background, for example, from the polys, but subsequently, you know, decide to major in architecture and sustainable design. Likewise, uh, conversely, I have also uh, admitted architecture diploma students before who subsequently went on to do an engineering program. So I think uh, just to share, uh, add on on the, you know, the profile, actually it's quite uh, diverse, but more importantly, it's also giving you the opportunity to discover uh, through the first three terms. Um, now, uh, I think there's also uh, relating to, uh, you know, the kind of admission profile. Earlier, I mentioned that in admissions, uh, rather than the typical grade profile, you know, your, your final GPA or the uh, university admission score for A-level students, it's not that one number, that magic number that we look out for, but uh, we do uh, require or have an emphasis on math and science competency. So, um, I think one common concern, uh, especially that poly students may have, is that uh, compared to their A-level peers, uh, they may not, uh, because of the uh, diploma, may not uh, be as strong in those areas, and this could be disadvantageous to them. So maybe you want to ask Kelly, do you agree that this is the case? Do you find that to be so? I think for, um, based on what I've seen, um, I'm not sure if any of you guys are aware, but actually our first term in SUD is actually pass fail. And I think a lot of students actually find that very beneficial in trying to adapt to the situation and try to learn from different, um, based on the academic rigor and adapting to the whole SUTD life as a whole. And I think that the stereotype that poly students are more hands-on and JC students are more like maybe mugger kind, uh, I think this is something that um, a lot of SUTD students tend to debunk because um, in our term two, there's actually a design thinking module where both JC students and poly students are grouped together. Like everybody is in a group and you have to do a hands-on design thinking um, project. And I think this is the way that um, a lot of students get their hands dirty. And both JC students and poly students get to work on the academic side as well as the hands-on side of things. Mm. Um, Serene, do you still remember, you know, how you score in your A-levels, uh, math and science subjects? And uh, for you, uh, how do you find coping, you know, in the, the, the curriculum in the first year and subsequently in the uh, pillar? Uh, okay, so as you saw in the slides earlier, there was like quite a number of people who got admitted getting A's and B's. For me, I got B's and C's. So <laughs> um, I think... Honestly, I was coping quite well in freshman year because of the whole cohort classroom uh, allocations that we have. So basically, for the first year, because we also 
have compulsory hostel stay, we are closer to our classmates in that sense. So because of these whole bonding sessions that we have throughout the whole term, uh, it actually helps us to help each other better. So if any of us are struggling, you know, we can just go over to each other's rooms or in the cohort classroom and just help each other out on a whiteboard. You know, whatever questions that we have, we will help each other. So I don't think that, like, because of my, um, like, academics that I suffered, because of my friends, you know, they helped me in my academics as well, yeah. Mm, I think that's important. Uh, I have a related question for uh, you know, a student from SOTA, uh, the IB program, what's the minimum entry requirement? Uh, so it will be quite similar to what we have shared earlier. It's not your uh, you know, overall IB score point that we're looking at, uh, but really uh, also how you perform in the IB math and science uh, subjects as an uh, emphasis, but also uh, over, other than that, all your other uh, application uh, profile that you submit through, your CCAs, your portfolio is a part of the holistic admission. Uh, there's a question for, you know, working adults, if you are, you know, and we have seen students who uh, either take a gap year or, you know, uh, decide to work a couple of years before applying to the university. Uh, we have a very small number of such students. Majority are actually graduates from uh, directly from uh, high schools. But for those students who decide to work a few years, we do take into consideration your relevant work experience as well. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's, it's really what kind of narrative you want to share with us. So we really want to see what kind of relevant experience you bring as part of our holistic uh, review. Uh, now, just now the students also mentioned, I think both uh, uh, Kelly and also Serene also mentioned that there are a lot of support that we provide to students. I think, Yenji, you mentioned that the, uh, you know, the, half the modules taken in the first year actually do not count towards the GPA. Other than that, we also provide bridging uh, classes uh, to support students who need to brush up on some subjects. You know, there will be some modules that you have not taken or for boys who have uh, enlisted uh, after two years, maybe you have gotten rusty as well. Just want to share that there are bridging modules available. Maybe Kelly, just to check with you, have you taken any bridging modules before? Do you want to share your experience? Yeah, uh, for myself, I actually took ILP Chem and Bio before school started. Coming from a poly engineering background, like I haven't really touched Chem and Bio since like Sec Two and Sec Four. So I think it was quite helpful in the sense that it allowed me to sort of touch base with all the different Chem and Bio knowledge before I actually went into freshman year and I had to take Chem and Bio related courses. And I think a point that I wanted to highlight was that um, quite a lot of students come in like not knowing how to code or maybe not very sure about coding fundamentals. So there's actually an ILP coding course that they actually offered. And a lot of my friends took the course and I think it helped them a lot in their term one module when they actually had to do a lot of Python programming. Thank you. I think moving on to a slightly different topic, there's a question that was asked. Uh, since we can choose the course that we want to take in the first three semesters, does the performance in the three semesters affect the course that you can take? Uh, the answer is no. Uh, in fact, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the first three terms are purely designed to let you explore, let you uh, do self-discovery uh, of, uh, you know, and of course ground you in the, in the various fundamentals, uh, but uh, you have every uh, opportunity to discuss, uh, discover and decide for yourself. In fact, uh, in the first three terms, you will also be able to uh, talk to the different professors, the faculties, who will give you an idea of what those, uh, you know, different majors are. You'll get to see the kind of projects that your seniors do, uh, so you'll be able to really decide for yourself how, uh, you know, which program you want to major in. Now, actually, on a related topic, you know, there are some students who come uh, in uh, knowing what programs uh, already at the right from the beginning they want to major in. There are others who are still exploring. So I just wanted to check, you know, what, what is your experience? Maybe Yan Chi, do you, you know, when you apply to SUTD, do you already know that you want to do uh, EPD, for example? Yeah, so uh, when I came into SUTD, I actually have uh, no idea what I wanted to do la, because I know there's this whole uh, um, computer science uh, boom that everyone's going towards, right? Everyone wants to do computer science, right? But uh, I wasn't sure because I didn't have any experience. Uh, but prior to coming to SUTD, I did have a bit of experience with uh, hardware. So I did have an interest in EPD, but I wasn't uh, entirely sure. La. But I think um, based on my uh, fresh more experience uh, doing uh, 3007, which is uh, the design module, as well as uh, some of the physics and um, math modules, I was, I was really, really interested in working into uh, hardware. La, and it helped me to make my decision to eventually go to EPD. 
And uh, Serene, you mentioned that you all along are interested in ASD. So, uh, so Freshmore being very uh, you know, uh, open and exploratory, uh, did that further help you affirm your interest? Or do, you still, do you think that that's also helpful for what you eventually do in ASD? Um, okay, for ASD, I think that because the first few terms in uh, Freshmore is uh, a general course, right? So there was quite a lot of different things I got to experience, both coding as well as uh, the design part of our project. So I think that actually helped me to further affirm that I want architecture because of the design process during our design project. It helped me to realize that you know, I really wanted to do something with the design. But at the same time, with the coding portion, I know that coding is not my strength. So um, I definitely won't be going into computer science. That, so that kind of like made sure that I will be going into architecture already. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, there, there are some questions regarding hostel stay. And I earlier mentioned that we require all the students, uh, first year students, to stay in our student housing for the first two terms. Uh, the question is um, during the pandemic period, how is this being uh, managed? Uh, so I know, Kelly, you're actually a house guardian. So even after the first uh, two terms, uh, compulsory stay, you continue to stay on. You want to share a little bit about how hostel life is like during the pandemic? Yes? Yeah, sure. So when I came into SUDD, actually the pandemic was already underway. So um, I went through the whole pandemic experience. But based on what I've experienced over the past two years, um, hostel life, um, within hostel itself, we actually have three main branches of events. We have floor events, which are meant for like people on your floor. They tend to be your classmates or even people from neighboring classes. So you actually get to know your classmates better on these floor events. And there's also interest-based events. So these are events such as like nano blocks building, um, planting microgreens, for example. And there's also hostel-wide events. And these events are like more for the bigger scale events, such as um, we actually had a recent like, virtual escape room. And um, a lot of events were actually held online due to the pandemic. But I feel that the hostel life and residential life aspect of um, SUTD has not been lost because you get to meet each other along the corridors or like in meeting rooms in hostel. And I think it's very helpful, especially when we are doing projects um, for example, in term two, the design thinking module, you actually get to go to each other's room and actually work on a project if it's really urgent, for example. Mm. Thank you. I think relating to this question is also about the integration. Uh, in SUTD, we have around 20 to 25 percent international students. I do know there are some international students joining us. They may also be concerned about you know, the integration of international students uh, in the student community. Uh, Yanzhi, what do you think? Uh, you know, is, this, is this an area of concern? Do, do you, uh, how well integrated are our international students? Yeah, so I think uh, our international students are actually very well integrated into SUTD. So in fact, um, during my stay in hostel in the first uh, in my first year, when uh, the pandemic wasn't still uh, raging everywhere, um, my roommates were actually both. Uh, I had two different roommates, and both of them were international students. And I think we had a very enjoyable time, lah. Sometimes uh, playing some video games, as well as uh, chit chatting about like their their lives in their home countries and all that. So I think they are actually very well integrated, and they also do embrace our uh, Singaporean culture and how we uh, teach and learn. Uh. So uh, yeah, uh, I think for interna international students, you do not have to worry about uh, not being able to integrate because it's a very friendly and a very uh, nice culture in SUTD and everyone is very welcoming. Yeah. Mm, thank you. Uh, I move on to a separate question on scholarships. I think there are two questions uh, on this related topic. Uh, how many scholarships can, can one apply for during the admissions uh, period? as well as um, when can students apply for scholarship. So uh, very quickly, you can apply for scholarship as part of your admission application. So it's one single online application form, uh, but there is a section asking you whether you wish to apply for scholarship. Just make sure that you tick the box uh, and uh, then answer some additional questions on you know, what are some of the reasons why we should consider awarding you. Now, do you need to indicate how many or what specific scholarships you want to apply for? No, because we know that uh, students will want 
want to apply for as many scholarships as they are eligible for. Uh, so don't worry about that. Just need to indicate that you're interested to apply and leave that uh, decision on what scholarship to award you to the admissions committee. So the admissions committee will actually review your application comprehensively uh, and also against the competition uh, and then decide based on the merits of your application what is the scholarship that we can uh, award to you along with your admission offer. Uh, in some cases, it could be uh, nominating you for donor-sponsored scholarships, which as I mentioned, uh, can also offer further development opportunities. In such cases, you may need to also go for additional interviews on that. Now, I just want to quickly open the floor here to uh, you know, ask uh, uh, maybe uh, Kelly, do you have any advice to, for students applying for scholarships, how they can potentially improve their chances of getting a scholarship? Um, I think definitely, please be yourself. Um, there's no point faking it and like trying to put out things that aren't you. And I feel that um, one thing you should do is definitely believe in yourself because um, if you deserve it, and I'm sure most of you do, um, if you really deserve it, it will probably be showing already and you will probably have whatever you need in order to get it. <laughs> Yenchi, what about you? You also had a scholarship at the point of admission. Mm, yes, so yeah, I agree with Ke what Kelly says and uh, I think especially during the uh, interview, the um, compulsory interview during the admissions, I think it's good to uh, show your strengths, lah, like to um, show what, what you're good in, uh, whether you have any prior experience in coding, in CADing, in uh, design and this can all uh, help your application uh, for scholarships. Lah. Mm. Thank you. I think uh, we may have a bit of time to open the floor to the live audience in the auditorium uh, for one or two questions. Uh, does anybody want to ask uh, either myself or the panel here any questions? Feel free to just go to the mic if you want to ask us any questions. Anyone? Okay, if not, then maybe we can answer some questions that are uh, still being sent through. Uh, for the first uh, three terms, uh, are there a set of lessons being scheduled uh, for you? Um, so I think uh, specifically, as I mentioned, actually, uh, the first three terms are common. Uh, in particular, uh, you know, each semester you are able to take uh, four modules. Um, so term one, term two, those modules are fixed for you. Uh, but in the uh, term three, uh, actually, uh, there are two co uh, compulsory modules. And after that, actually, there are four electives from which you can choose two. In fact, this is also something that we just uh, redesigned I think two years ago, reintroduced two years ago, to allow uh, students the flexibility to pick those electives that will further help them, uh, you know, decide or discover and decide which of the programs to major in. So I think that's something that, uh, uh, you know, may be helpful for you to know. Uh, okay, we maybe have time for one other question. Um, let's see. Uh, can I apply to SUTD after taking a gap year? So yes, we, uh, as I earlier mentioned, we have accepted students who uh, took a gap year and apply. And in fact, you should make use of that gap year uh, to tell us, you know, how what you have learned, uh, how that gap year has enriched your experience, uh, and how that has made you perhaps uh, a better uh, a better choice for us to consider you, you know, in terms of helping you discover your interests, your passion. So make use of that time uh, to, uh, you know, it's not just taking a break. Uh, but using that to enhance your admission application. Okay, I think, um, I think that's all the time that we have for to answer the questions that have been sent through. But in case you still have any questions or your questions are very specific, again, I want to encourage you to approach us at the booth outside uh, or our virtual consult sessions. Uh, and on top of that, also just like to share with you all the schedules. Uh, for those of you who are not able to join us live today, um, actually we do have a um, campus immersion program every Saturday all the way until 19th March. Uh, so these are led by an admission staff and also our student ambassadors on SUTD campus. They'll bring you on a tour uh, of SUTD. Uh, so you can join us uh, you know, for those uh, sessions. On alternatively, we also have consult sessions for students applying to us with specific qualifications. Uh, so those are under schedule that you see there. Or if you like, you can also check with an admissions officer live as well every uh, Wednesday afternoon. So there are many channels to connect with us. I just want to end off by encouraging all of you to not hesitate. Uh, to quickly put in an application or not wait until the last minute to do so because you'll find that you, know, you are in a hurry and you may miss out on any important information. Okay, with that, I'd like to thank you for your time and I really look forward to engaging with all of you soon. Thank you. Thank you to the panellists. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
Hello. Thank you, Su Fang. Thank you, Serene, Yanzhi, Kelly. And thank you for joining us for the admissions and scholarship section of the SUTD Open House 2022. The next session we'll be having is with the Computer Science and Design Pillar, which is at 3.30. So come along if you are interested in becoming the next, well, Steve Jobs. Ha <laughs> ha